Father, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Today is the fifth Sunday of Great Lent. It's really going by quickly. And today we read from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 5. We remember our Lord healing the paralytic, the man who was paralyzed, who was unable to move for 38 years. And this poor man, he had seen others being healed in this nearby pool of water, and he had no one to help him to get there. Every time the angel stirred the water, and he was stuck, and he was unable to receive God's blessings. In this parable, <clears throat> we see that he's been this way for a long time. In the life of the Orthodox Church, and in the writings of the Church Fathers, we get this picture that the ultimate paralysis, which leads to death, is a sinful life. Our sins freeze us, spiritually speaking. Our sins make it hard for us to change, it makes it hard for us to move and to grow in our faith. Our sins make it really difficult for us to live simply and abundantly a life that our Lord really wants for us. So here we have a man who is really stuck. He's in a very difficult position with almost no hope at all. Yet into this hopelessness and pain comes our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our Lord comes to this man directly. And this by itself should cause our hearts great joy. The King of heaven, the maker of all things, descended to our level, and then he goes directly to this poor man who is sick and who is in great need. And he does something that most kings and great leaders never do. He serves. He speaks with this man who is in great need. Who is this man that the Lord of glory should come to him? Who are we that the Lord should come to us? But such is the grace of God and his mercy towards mankind. And this should really comfort us. And as we listen to this gospel passage, it strikes me, it's amazing that while the Lord is speaking directly to the sick man, the man is not focused on him. He's not focused on the Lord. He's focused on the pool. He's focused on this pool of miracles. Even to this day, I think, we're a lot like this man. Sure, we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, but our hearts and our minds and our attention are on other things. We're all focused on, on other things that we humanly think will solve the problems of our lives. Doctors and medicines and low interest rates and electric vehicles and whatever else we're told that will cure us, whatever we're told that will cure the world around us. We focus on these things. Even in the church, which is truly the house of mercy, and some of the translations for the Bethsaida, it means house of mercy. Some of the translations take it that way. So it's easy to get sidetracked in the church. The church is indeed the house of mercy, but it's also the body of Christ. And what makes this place holy and what makes this place a place of healing is not that we do the right stuff. It's a holy place of healing because Christ himself is present and he is holy and he heals us. We're filled with his word and we receive the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ unto healing and to restoration of new life. This is why this is important that we come to church on a regular basis. So we come to the church and the Lord, he asks each one of us the same question that he asked this man. Do you want to be healed? And that's the question that each one of us has to answer for ourselves if we're being honest with ourselves. And God knows our, and he will honor our desire. 
Do you want to be healed? It's a simple question, but loaded. Do you want to be healed? As Christians, we lose track of why is it that we come to church. Sometimes we come simply to socialize. Sometimes we come only for Sunday school. Maybe out of habit. But the real reason why we must come to church is because we desire to be healed. What sort of healing do we need? Well, all of it. We require mental, emotional, spiritual healing. All of us. All of us carry many wounds, and oftentimes these wounds exist because of our own sinfulness, because of my own decisions. And sometimes we have these wounds because of the sinfulness of others. But one primary task of the Holy Church is to provide medicine. We're sick. We're sick from anger. We're sick from impatience. We're sick from lust. We're sick from worry and anxiety. We're sick from pride. We're sick from the love of wealth and materialism. We're sick from gluttony and laziness and the need for power. We're sick from busyness. We're sick from entertainment. We're sick from attention. All of these things are affecting us as Christians. They're affecting us as human beings. And they become walls between us and God. The man in today's gospel, he was sick for a very long time, 38 years. It's hard for us to imagine those number of years, those number of days. Sometimes we've carried our sins, our spiritual infirmities for a very long time. And we carry these sins of jealousy and anger and lust and pride and the love of wealth. And we've lacked faith in God and we trust it in ourselves instead. The thing is, you can't take an antibiotic to be cured of anger. You can't put a bandage on worry. You can't take a pill to cure your problems with the lust of the flesh. So what now? How do we find healing from all of these ailments that are spiritual in nature? Well, I think it depends on how we answer the question, do you want to be healed? I suspect that if you want to be cured of anger, you might reply, of course, yes, I want to be cured. But in the depths of our heart, is that really true? Because sometimes, Sometimes I feel justified to hold on to that resentment. Kind of feels good a little bit. I'm not ready to let it go. There is a difference between our words and the actions that follow our words. That's what defines our relationship with Christ the Master. God isn't impressed by our outward appearance. He wants the heart. He wants the heart. So we see that the Lord had great compassion on this paralytic because he had not been help, offered help by others. In a matter of speaking, this is what God is looking for. God desires those who recognize that we have no other hope but him. And we have to learn to lean on God and to pray to God with that kind of disposition. And we have to ask ourselves difficult questions. Am I using my time in a way that demonstrates my true desire for healing? Our lives are defined by, by what we do and how we use our time. Our lives are defined by what we do and how we use our time. How are we showing the Lord that we are genuinely waiting for healing? Are we filling our time only with work? Are we filling with our time with to-do lists and plans for the future? Are we filling our time with social media and games 
and shows and entertainment. Do these things really help our desire to be healed? We have to ask ourselves difficult questions. Are they really helping? Do they really bring me closer to Christ? We have plenty of things that take our time and our attention, but really how many of them are really profitable for us? All things are lawful, not all things edify, as St. Paul says. Not all things are good for me. Where is the reading of the word of God in our daily activities? When is it that we make time for prayer? Not short, routine prayers, but, but real prayer. And I think everybody knows what I'm talking about. Real prayer. Not when I'm in the car and I'm driving to work. And Real prayer. When am I sacrificing time and space to simply sit in the presence of God? When am I doing that? And when we have the opportunity to run to the church and to take the body and blood of Christ, what is our disposition? Are we going reluctantly? Are we kind of rolling our eyes and out of bed and I just don't want to go and I just want to sleep in today and I don't want to... Do we understand that all of Christ's healing is offered here in the church? All of it. Oftentimes we say to each other, I wish I could pray more. I wish I could spend more time with my family. I wish I could overcome my addiction. I wish I could become a better person. I wish I could have a deeper faith. I wish I could stop swearing. I wish I could stop being so impatient. We're always looking for the fruit of healing. We're always looking for the fruit. The healing itself results in better relationships and better time management and better ability to defeat sin and better everything. It's the healing itself, not the fruit. Don't look at the fruit. These things are not healing. They are the byproducts and the results of healing. Achieving these things is only possible when we focus on the source of healing, the true physician. And that source is and must be our Lord Jesus Christ, our creator and the giver of life. That's it. Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be healed? It's a question with meaning for each one of us because it reminds us that we're all sick. Whether we are spiritually sick or if we want to be spiritually healed, the question is, do you want to be healed? What's really inside our hearts? That's the question for today. <laughs> What is our true deepest desire? Is it a desire for the things of this world, for the pleasures of life, or is it a desire for the merciful healing touch that comes from our Lord Jesus Christ? Why aren't people lining up to receive healing? People all over the world and here in our own uh, little city here, Chino Hills, who are sick spiritually people are sick but the question is why don't they line up to receive healing why aren't people rushing for confession especially when we reach an older age I feel like we we almost like graduate from confession and it's really focused on our kids but but hopefully one day we'll be inspired to break down the doors of the priest to ask for confession to demand it even and I think that the answer is loaded. Why aren't people loading up, uh, lining up? First, I think people don't always realize the depth of their sickness. We don't always know that we need comprehensive healing. And I think second, people don't line up to be healed because they don't know where to find it. This paralytic, he was sick for 38 years. And for some of that time, he sat and he hoped and waited for someone to help him to the pool so that he could be healed. 
And in this case, he thought he knew the answer. He has it all figured out. He thought he understood the source of healing. But it's not the case, because the source of healing was not to be found in the water, but the one who commands the angel to stir the water. The source of healing was not the water, but the one who created the water itself. St. John Chrysostom tells us that this man, his patience through his sickness is a great reminder of how we should be praying to God. Oftentimes we pray for a minute, if that, hopefully, <laughs> I'll take the minute, for maybe for some time, I'll put it that way, and we ask God to solve our problems. We ask God to heal our sicknesses and to answer our prayers, and then we give up because our, answer, our prayers are not answered immediately. Or we don't really think that God, that God can hear us. And we become resentful towards him. We are never guaranteed that God will answer our prayers in the way that we expect. But I pray that it's our firm belief that God will answer our prayers according to his will. And I hope that's okay. Sometimes it requires patience. Amazing patience, great patience to see the hand of God in our lives. But this brings me back to the biggest question. We don't ask for healing because we don't know how sick we really are. We don't come directly to the source of all healing because we don't understand how sick we really are. We have amazing doctors and medicine in this country and we can reasonably help people with physical illnesses, but man is more than body and brain. He is meant to be the image and likeness of God himself. This is what makes us true human beings. And so this happens when we are healthy in our soul. And this regeneration is foreshadowed, the resurrection that all believers who believe in Christ will face one day. When we're brought into the body of Christ, the church, which is a spiritual hospital, the house of mercy, and we go down to the pool of, the pool of baptism, we are raised up healed. We as Christians are called to be continually aware of our sins, which is our paralysis. It's how someone like Saint Mary of Egypt can call herself wretched. How Saint Paul can say, I'm the chief of sinners. Wretched. We are reminded that we oftentimes have to look for answers to our spiritual problems. Sometimes we, we do this incorrectly. We, we look for spiritual problems. We look for answers in material things. Material things don't heal us. It doesn't help our spiritual sins or our paralysis. Only the master can do this. Our time and our attention that is unnecessarily spent away from God can be defined as idolatry. When we invest in our looks and our health and our entertainment, none of these things bring help with our true problem, what's really going on. Then we become like the paralytic who waits for a man to put him into the pool at the right time. This becomes his focus in life and his desire. He doesn't understand that God alone offers the spiritual, powerful healing that he desires. So just to conclude, the paralytic, he waited for 38 years and he even found his way to the pool that could offer this healing what he could not imagine and what he could not expect was that the man standing next to him could offer him a greater healing both physically and spiritually in an instant 
And this happens daily. God heals our physical infirmities. And more importantly, God heals the spiritual illnesses that can divide man from his creator. And this type of transformation is apparent in the lives of the multitude of saints and the holy men and women in the church. So we have some lingering questions. Should I stay paralyzed in sin? Or should I live as if truly the way that we're meant to live? It will come down to how we answer the question posed by our master today. Do you want to be healed? And glory be to God forever. Amen. Yeah.